The last year has been a true roller coaster for the automotive industry. Dealership lots for the better part of the last year have been sitting empty. The cars that are still on dealership lots are marked up by tens of thousands of dollars and used cars, even ones that are older with higher mileage are selling for in some cases, double the price of what they were selling for two years ago. Now I've talked a lot on my channel about the new and used car market, where prices currently are, where they're heading in the short term, as well as some of the questionable activities on behalf of the dealership and the manufacturer that almost certainly will burn bridges with their customer base. But what I haven't addressed on this channel is how we got here today. Because the reality is where we are today isn't a result of just the pandemic, the chip shortage, a shift to electric cars, or an increase in demand with a decrease in inventory. What we're experiencing today in the used and new car market, as well as what we've been experiencing for the better part of two years now, is the result of a perfect storm of events. And today we're gonna to be taking a deep dive into this perfect storm, because to truly understand where the car market is heading in the future, you first have to understand how we got here. So let's rewind to March of 2020. The first quarter of 2020 was the last normal quarter we experienced as a country. And I suppose normal may be an understatement as right around the start of 2020, we were all beginning to hear about this weird flu-like virus on the news called COVID-19. And of course, we all know what happened with that. But as far as the car market goes, things in the market were relatively flat, but solid. Car demand was stable. Car prices were steadily increasing year over year, but not at an accelerated rate. The average price for a used car was $17,500, while the average price for a new car was $37,185. This was the good old days of buying used cars. And before Q1 of 2020, you could absolutely find a really solid car for under three to $4,000. And as a Turo host, I can say that I miss those days. March 15th, 2020 is the day that truly changed the country. At this point, countries all over the world had already began shutting down due to the pandemic. But on March 15th, that's when the shutdowns really started to occur here in the United States. This was when the dominoes of the car market began to fall. We just didn't know it yet. Whenever we talk about the effect that the pandemic had on the used and new car market, it's important to understand that this effect wasn't just happening and coming from one single direction. This was a multi-pronged effect coming from multiple different directions and sources that was having massive impacts on the used and car industry. After March 15th, in the first few weeks of government shutdowns, there was a lot of discussions of the automotive industry becoming crushed and crippled by the pandemic. This was at the time blamed on government shutdowns preventing people from going to dealerships in some states and counties, factories closing and thus production coming to a halt, as well as the fact that people were getting let go left and right. And let's face it, if you get let go of your job, that newer used car purchase is gonna be one of the first things to be on the chopping block. But the decisions that manufacturers and dealerships made in the weeks after March 15th, that's what really put the pieces into motion for the used and new car market to become what it is today. 0% financing, deferred payments, and insane dealership incentives. Almost immediately after the pandemic kicked off, the automotive industry responded with really aggressive incentives. And the fact that the federal interest rate was now at 0% was just icing on the cake. Here you can see a list of just a handful of the different incentives that different manufacturers were offering in order to get people into the door of their dealerships and in order to get them to buy a car. But it wasn't just the aggressive incentives. But it was also the fact that dealerships adapted quite quickly to the change in consumer climate, with dealerships offering at-home visits, contactless purchasing, and more of an online experience. And this actually worked really well, because if you look at sales volume for cars during this period of time, you'll see a massive dip in March of 2020. But within a matter of weeks, demand shot right back up, and in April of 2020, sales volume was nearly back to normal. Now, it is important to note that what happened in this period of time with car sales and car demand wasn't just because of dealership and manufacturer incentives, but there were some other outside factors as well, including stimulus payment, increased unemployment, and more. But for the sake of this video, we're going to be really focusing just on what the manufacturers and the dealerships did specifically. The point is, is that demand fell almost instantly whenever the pandemic first kicked off, but the recovery was V-shaped and it was incredibly fast because of these insane incentives. And though this of course was good for dealerships and manufacturers at the time, the problem was that when the pandemic first kicked off and while demand was still low, even though it was a short period of time, auto manufacturers immediately started making moves to adopt this new economic situation we had all found ourselves in. 
As a result, car manufacturers canceled orders. This included semiconductor chip orders for their vehicles, which are produced by third-party companies and then used in the production of their cars. You see, the average car is made up of 30,000 different components and has anywhere between 1,500 to 3,000 semiconductor chips in one single car. Semiconductor chips are needed to do virtually everything we see in a vehicle, to helping the car run, providing us with AC, radio, lumbar support, USB drives, and more. And the problem was, was that once auto manufacturers canceled these semiconductor chip orders, it created a huge bottlenecking issues that were still being impacted by the day. Semiconductor chips are extremely complex and difficult to produce. There are only about a dozen companies worldwide that produce semiconductor chips on a massive scale, and most of these companies are located in Asia, which was a part of the world that was significantly impacted by the pandemic and government shutdowns, which further poured salt into the wound. Semiconductor chips can take months to produce, and at the production facilities, workers have to wear hazmat-like suits from head to toe to prevent contamination. The process is extremely complex, time intensive, and it's an industry American automakers rely almost entirely on overseas production for. And because of this, semiconductor chip manufacturing can't just simply switch on and off like a light switch. And once it was turned off by manufacturers and government shutdowns, it really struggled to kick back on again. So even once car sales and car demand started to pick back up and started to exceed normal levels, it was already too late and manufacturers couldn't continue the orders that they had previously canceled. The new car market remained level throughout 2020 and prices were actually quite good. But the used car market, on the other hand, saw an almost immediate uptick after demand started increasing. While prices in the new car industry really didn't start increasing until April of 2021, so about a year later. This is because at this time, the decrease in inventory paired with the increase in demand really came to a head. And as a result of a year's worth of limited to no production, paired with an increase in demand, left dealerships and manufacturers with no inventory by mid-2021. You may recall that around this time, summer of 2021, a few key things started to happen. This was when the rental car shortage occurred. The summer of 2021 was the first relatively normal summer since 2019, and people really capitalized off of this with increased travel demand. This exploded the rental car industry, but because of decrease in fleet numbers by rental car agencies throughout the country and the world, there was a flood of demand in the space. It was a good time to be a Turo host. But that's not it. Dealerships had no inventory, so the inventory they did have had insane dealer markups, and used car prices as a result exploded in price, and in a matter of months, some used cars began selling more used than they were when they were originally sold new. This continued for the rest of 2021 and is still continuing to an extent today. Now we can blame all of these factors, the shortages, the increase in demand, the pandemic, as to why prices rose in the first place. But they certainly aren't the main contributor as to why prices have remained high. And in order to talk about that, we have to fast forward to present day in 2022. Whenever we look at the car market as a whole and how prices are impacted, we have to take into consideration that though the used car market and the new car market are different, they are deeply reliant on one another when it comes to how prices fluctuate. As new car prices have gone up, it has priced new car buyers out of the market, leaving many buyers with no other choice than to buy used. So until prices return to normal in the new car industry, prices won't drop significantly in the used car industry either. But I wanna talk about the main factors as to why prices haven't fallen yet. Because though there is a used car bubble because of supply and demand, these are certainly not the only factors at play. Now, I've talked about dealership greed a lot on my channel, and whenever I talk about this and I use this term, what I'm really talking about are things like insane dealer markups, shady sales tactics, bait and switch, unnecessarily dealer add-ons, predatory finances, and more. Dealership greed is burning the bridge between the customer and the manufacturer. It's also severing brand loyalty, and it's leaving customers with a really bad taste in their mouth once they leave the dealership after buying a car. And all of this and more is toxic to the automotive industry. And all the while, manufacturers are telling dealerships that if they do in fact mark their cars well above MSRP, there will be steep repercussions that they have to pay, including violating their franchise agreement, fines, as well as losing allocations on various hot vehicles. But dealerships have called manufacturers bluff, and even though manufacturers have told dealerships not to do exactly what they're doing, they continue to do it, and manufacturers have become complicit, and they haven't done any of the things that they said they would do at the beginning of the year. 
Manufacturers simply are not holding dealerships accountable, and this is hurting everyone involved. This is another one that I recently spoke about on my channel, but the reality is the car market is shifting in the cars that are prioritized by the manufacturer. According to Cox Automotive, the midsize SUV segment is the largest vehicle segment in the United States, and manufacturers are really leaning into this. Manufacturers are prioritizing trucks and SUVs over economical sedans, with many of the affordable economic options being discontinued in the last couple of years. For example, the Toyota Yaris, Honda Fit, Ford Fusion, Ford Fiesta. These are all examples of affordable models that have recently been discontinued. The cars on the market that are available for less than $20,000 dollars have significantly decreased over the last couple of years, leaving consumers with fewer and fewer options if you're looking for a car on that budget. Today, one of the cheaper big name brands you can buy is a Chevy Spark, which actually has an average transaction of just over $20,000. The limited availability of new cars priced at under $20,000 is causing anybody that's looking for a car in this price range to really have no other choice but to go used. This has in turn created an influx of customers in the used car space, raising the prices even higher and keeping them high. One aspect of the equation that I don't think gets talked about enough is corporate greed. Sure, the pandemic, the chip shortage, a shifting consumer habits, this is all a reason as to why car prices have gone up. But car prices are not rising simply because of supply and demand. It's also because of greed. In 2021, Ford Motor Company's pre-tax profits were $10 billion, which was up $7.5 billion from 2020. GM's pre-tax profits were $14.3 billion, compared to $9.7 billion in 2020. BMW's pre-tax profits were 12.5 billion euros, compared to 3.8 billion in 2020. And Stellantis, the company behind brands like Dodge, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Jeep, Maserati, and more, had a 5x increase in profit from 2020 to 2021. And it is important to note that comparing the figures from 2021 to 2020 may be misleading because of the fact that the world was shut down for the better part of 2020. And so of course, manufacturers are going to make more in 2021 versus 2020. But even if we compare profitability of 2021 to 2019, the profits are still knocked out of the park. This is because manufacturers are producing less cars, but they're selling these cars for more. Manufacturers are cutting features left and right, but rather than decreasing the price to reflect these feature cuts, they are instead raising prices and blaming inflation. And manufacturers have gotten rid of their bottom tiered, lower margin, more affordable cars and are instead doubling down on their higher margin, more expensive vehicles. And manufacturers have already come out and said that they will no longer be keeping the inventory like it was back pre-pandemic because they have learned to be more efficient. The point is, is that sure, inflation, supply and demand, the chip shortage, all of these factors are valid reasons as to why prices rose. But corporate greed is a big reason as to why prices have remained high. And this isn't exclusive to the automotive industry. You're seeing this across the board from oil and gas, food, housing, and more. The point is, is that sure, inflation, supply and demand, semiconductor chips, factory closings, these are all reasons as to why prices rose and why prices are higher today than they were two years ago. But corporate greed is a major reason why prices have stayed astronomically high. And over the next few months, there are a handful of different factors that will absolutely have a heavy impact on the automotive industry and on used and new car prices, including auto loan delinquencies, repossessions, the recession, lower demand, and so much more. But the thing that will have the biggest impact on used and new car prices isn't going to be these factors that I just mentioned. Instead, it's going to be us, the consumer, refusing to buy cars at these insane prices. I think what is currently going on in the car market is really interesting because we can point to a dozen reasons as to why we are where we are today, why prices are high, why cars have become unaffordable, but the reality is there isn't one single reason. And instead, this last year has been the perfect storm of events that have caused vehicle prices to surge and car manufacturers to keep them that way. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.